Hey friends, welcome back to the channel. If you're new here, my name is Chris and I'm a marketing manager who's worked at Microsoft, Apple, and HP. In today's video, I'm gonna be sharing with you 10 marketing insider tips on how to save money while shopping online. But before we kick off, I have a quick favor to ask and that is if you could please smash the like button for me and more people can learn how to save money while shopping online just like you're about to. Tip number one is to check Facebook ads. Back in 2019, Facebook launched a feature called Ads Library, which let anyone see what ads a Facebook page is currently running. This means you can check your favorite brand's Facebook page to see which deals, coupon codes, and offers they are currently promoting. For example, let's say you want to keep your skin dewy and moisturized like me, and you want to buy the latest Korean green tea moisturizer from Adore Beauty. Well, you would go to the Adore Beauty Facebook page, scroll down until you see the page transparency section on the left hand column and click it. This will bring up the page transparency section, then click on go to ad library and now you can see all of the ads that are currently running on Facebook and Instagram. When you scroll through, you might be able to see some offers or codes that you can use for your next purchase. So for example, this code extra gift will give me a mystery gift when I spend $99 on sale. Tip number two is to sign up to a store's newsletter. When you sign up to a newsletter, you're giving the store permission to send you emails about offers, sales, new items, and promotions. As a new member, you will usually receive a one-time discount such as 10% off or a free gift. A related bonus tip is to like and follow a retailer's social media channels. This means the next time they're running a social media campaign targeting their followers, you'll probably be included and hopefully get a bargain. Tip number three is to use coupon and promo codes like Honey and Retail Me Not. These sites will list promo codes for a variety of online retailers. However, not every code will work, so there might be a little bit of trial and error. To solve this problem, Honey actually has a plugin for your web browser that automatically tries all of the coupon codes that are listed on their website. They also have a rewards program called Honey Gold, which lets you redeem points for online gift cards. Tip number four is to use cashback websites such as Cash Rewards or Shopback. These shopping portals provide cashback to their users on purchases from a variety of online retailers. The process is fairly straightforward and simple and we'll use Cash Rewards as an example. So first thing you need to do is to sign up to the Cash Rewards website. Then you'll find the online store you want to buy from and then click the store link and then you just shop as normal. Once the retailer approves the cashback amount, it will get deposited into your cash rewards account and then you can withdraw the cash back and send it to your bank account. Tip number five is to use referral links and codes as well as the refer a friend program. If you've ever listened to a podcast or watched a YouTube video, you've probably come across a sponsored ad where the content creator will say something like, use my code chrischat at checkout for $50 off, or please use my link audible.com forward slash chrischat for 20% off. Quick disclaimer, that's not a real code or, or a real link. You know, don't, don't use it. But if someone from Audible is watching this video, then hit me up. The discounts from these links and codes are often the steepest because the marketing teams already spent money on the sponsorship and they wanna make sure that the audience is incentivized to purchase. Some companies have a refer a friend program where any user can share their personalized link or code with their friends and family and usually both people will get a small amount such as $10 deposited into their accounts once all of the requirements have been met. I've actually included a referral link for Honey and Cash Rewards in the description box down below. So if you sign up and meet the necessary requirements, then you'll get a small deposit into your account and I'll get a small deposit into my account and that's a win-win. And tip number six is to go to ozbargain.com.au. Ozbargain is a great website that lists the best deals and bargains in Australia. The deals are posted by community members, so theoretically, only the best deals will appear on the front page and any bad deals will be downvoted or removed. Tip number seven is to use discounted e-gift cards. If you have insurance, chances are you have access to discounted e-gift cards through your insurance provider's rewards portal. Insurance companies will provide these benefits to their members for free in order to retain them as customers. 
Some of the more common rewards programs include HCS Thank You, Amy's Lucky Club, HBS Neat Idea, NIB Rewards, U Rewards, RACQ Lifestyle, and NIMA Blue. Non-insurance companies also offer access to these discounted e-gift cards such as AGL, Macquarie Bank, and even Cash Rewards. The discount offered will vary depending on the provider and can range on the low end from 3% all the way up to 30% on the high end. If you have a look at the Amy Lucky Club rewards, you'll see a lot of retailers both online and in-store listed. For example, you have Kohl's, Amazon, Big W, Target, Apple, Xbox, and even Uber. I know 3% doesn't sound like much, but over time it will add up and every dollar you can save is a dollar you can invest. For example, using the 3% discounted e-gift card could save the average Australian household $397 a year. That's based on the average Australian household's weekly grocery spend being $254.96. One thing to note is that some retailers will have a purchase limit, so make sure you read the terms and conditions of the e-gift card. Also, I personally wouldn't buy a gift card until I have a purchase ready in mind. Tip number eight is to use a price comparison website such as ShopBot or GetPrice. These sites allow you to check the price of an item across different retailers. Let's say you wanted to buy the Apple AirPods Pro. Well, you would go to the GetPrice website and search Apple AirPods Pro. Next, you would click on the product listing and now you can see all of the prices listed. Looks like the cheapest price right now is $329, but there is an additional cost for shipping. A more niche price comparison website is Camel Camel Camel. I know, it's a weird name, but it's legit. This site specifically tracks the price of goods sold on Amazon.com. A handy feature of this website is that you can create an alert that will automatically email you when the price of a specific good drops. Tip number nine is knowing when to shop. Specifically, knowing when the sales events happen every year. Starting off in January, you have the continuation of Boxing Day sales, followed by March where you have Afterpay Day, then April you have Vogue Online Shopping Night, then in May you have Click Frenzy, June and July you'll see the end of financial year sales, in August you'll have another Afterpay Day, in October you'll have the Vogue Online Shopping Night, and then in November you have Singles Day on the 11th, followed by Black Friday and Cyber Monday. And then last but not least, you have Boxing Day in December. If you can delay your purchase until one of these sales events, you're more likely to grab a deal. In terms of discounts, Boxing Day sales were historically the most competitive in Australia, but now more and more retailers are going harder in Black Friday in order to achieve their sales targets earlier. And last but not least, tip number 10 is to tell retailers when your birthday is. Some stores will send you a gift for a discount code either on or before your birthday. Thank you for watching. I hope you picked up one or two tips on how to save money while shopping online. If you did, make sure to leave a like and subscribe for more videos about personal finance, investing and saving money. As always, an important disclaimer. I am not a financial advisor. This is not financial advice. This video and my channel is for general information only. As with anything in life, you should do your own due diligence and seek independent advice.